guys. Today we're going to uh, Pajuding. Yeah, I'm getting ready right now. So, I got the waterproof pants. These are a couple of things which I'm taking. A uh, bunch of socks. I'm taking two pairs of socks. A sweater in case it gets cold. One go. I don't have a carrier, so I'm just gonna take a belt. And also a raincoat. <coughs> this is gonna be very useful. Okay, let's go. It's 2.54 p.m. and we have started our ascent up to Fajuding. We to Fajuding. Pumala. It's, it's 4.43, we're halfway up the mountain, we just reached the resting point, there's like a canopy here. Come on, what again? Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The road leading up is pretty wide. They take horses with supplies up, but it's very muddy because it's raining. Walking up one mountain it just makes us wonder how people used to go to Tibet from Bhutan. <laughs> Just ate some food, drank some tea, we refreshed and yeah, we are going up Pajuding to the Pajuding Monastery. As we inch closer and closer to the summit, we can, we can actually feel the serenity of the place. It feels powerful, you know. It feels like Ascending to heaven, basically. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think we've just come across a small water chorten. The inside is supposed to spin. Guess it's not working right now. It's a prayer wheel. It's powered by the water, so it can spin. We've reached somewhere <laughs> in the plane. I think that's like a tamkang. And there is a very, very old chorten over here. It looks cracked, and also there is a hole which is filled in. I believe there is, that is uh, somebody took out the valuable stuff from inside and sold it which is said to be like the worst thing you can do in terms of merit. That happens sometimes, you know. People get carried away by their greed and they end up doing something that destroys their karma almost forever, I guess.
you can have a glimpse of Pajuding Monastery over there. It's almost uh, 7 p.m. We are about to reach our uh, campsite. It's not not exactly a campsite. We, we have a house up there, like a yeah, like a lagang, where we're gonna spend the night. So, yeah, it's getting real dark, so yeah, you won't be able to see anything from here. Okay. <laughs> Seven fifty. Well, you're still walking up the mountain in pitch black darkness, and there is also a lot of fog, so you cannot even see that far. It's eight p.m. We're finally here. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. So uh, we're here at the place about Pajini. The Lama here, he gave us a place to stay for the night and it turns out to be Pajitu Gimshipo's uh, Drukkang or where he meditated. So it feels very auspicious to be here. It's 5.53 in the morning. We just had a little bit of breakfast. To <coughs> for energy for the long journey ahead. Let me show you around. This lagang and all of these houses are built under and over a cliff. Cliff is <laughs> the monks here have lifted a song over here. This is a offering, smoke offering. <coughs> In a while, we're gonna be going that way and up to see Drumto. The spiritual lakes, they're said to be 18 lakes in the peak of the mountains. This is the kitchen. So, so, so.
I have been given the task of fetching some hot water so that we can keep our lunch. Yeah, lunch hot. I got the hot water. <laughs> this uh, this place is uh, <coughs> known as the meditation ground of uh, Paju Dugum Jimpo. And uh, it is also said to be spiritually inclined with the god Genuisi, which is also known as the uh, god of compassion. And the mantra for Genuisi goes Oma Nipe Mehu, Oma Nipe Mehu. So chanting this mantra here gives you extreme merit. And it is also a prayer for all the sentient beings to attend enlightenment. <laughs> this is Tujidra. Tujidra. Now we are about to move to the Dungso. Uh, Take a seat, bro. So here we are about to cross the tree line. After we cross the tree line, they said that it's gonna be plain. That's gonna be so beautiful to see. Along the path you can see like this piles of stone. So apparently these stone structures that people make are called lapsa. There's a big lapsa out there. So if the weather stays like this, clear, we'll get a good view of the Lake Tungso at the peak. Very clear view of the plane and the uh, sense uh, of our soul. We've come across another beautiful soul down there. 
It's right next to the other so Here. It's 11 a.m. Yeah, we've been walking for a long time. I think it's right up there. That's what they're saying. Final stretch. Trinco is down there, but you cannot see because of the fog. The wind chill is very, very cold. By the time we reached here, it's already foggy, so we cannot get a clear witness of the so. So we are taking a short. 10 minute very very steep walk down to the top. This is it. This is Dungso. One of the biggest so in Bhutan. So one of the most auspicious so also all the air and water that is over here seeps down to Bhutan and to the rest of the Himalayan foothills. So it is believed that any prayer or any offering you give here goes to the beings that draw their life from this uh, very water body. We are very, very grateful for the local deities for allowing us witness to this great lake. When you came down here, it was all covered. My mother and auntie and some other travelers, they offered their prayers and surprisingly, it cleared up for a bit. Yes. So it's beginning to get covered up again. So we are very, very lucky. The curtain is drawn down again, and the mystery is sealed away. It's, it's 12 o'clock. We have accomplished our mission and now we are heading back down. And Sitter gave me some doma. This doma really increases your body temperature. <laughs> we are on our way back. Everything is cold and wet. It's raining. Woo. Raining. I'm completely drenched. There's a wind chill and my fingers are barely working. But the goodness is we made it halfway. Yeah. So after this trip, there's only like two more hills to climb, and we'll be back. Day three. We are going back now. Last time when we were coming up it was uh, already dark so we didn't see this but it's a flower field. There's a cow over there. So 
Yesterday when we got back from Dunso, everyone was like drenched in cold water, feet hurting because we were walking the whole day. And we thought like we couldn't even walk today. But uh, we spent a night in uh, Tuje Drong in the Lakhang, where Pajudugum Jingpo is said to have uh, witnessed Tenryzi in uh, real life. And uh, when you woke up, surprisingly, everybody was like fit and ready to go. Uh, my aunt and me, we had a fever yesterday, but when we woke up, it was completely gone. And our feet, it felt like we didn't even walk yesterday. Uh, yeah, that's the magic of this place, you know. <laughs> you can actually feel the energy, like the healing energy of the place. Yeah. This uh, painting of the Buddha on the rock is said to have uh, come up by itself. So nobody has painted this, but it has come up by itself. Through erosion of rocks and watermarks. This, uh, this formation is uh, believed to be the future Buddha, Mitriya or Jojamba in Zongha. We're at Pajuding Monastery right now. Uh, the monks here were kind enough to grant, uh, give us some tea. And uh, we're planning to go to uh, Menha, which is the god of medicine, and uh, have a witness in this lagang also. Okay. The lagang dedicated to the medicine Buddha, or Menha. After three long days, we are finally back. Finally back. Mm -hmm. 